the truth does not require me to agree with it in order for it to be the truth. All that the truth simply has to do is this merely exist. Hello folks, it is I, the Amazing Kitty of Sotis, with another video. And today, I'm going to be talking about why do children not want to be around their parents? And without further ado, let's get, get on with the video. And so, what could parents do to help their relationship with their children? And we're gonna we're gonna go into this. So the f the thing we're gonna I'm gonna be reading is why many conservatives won't be with their children or grandchildren this Christmas. And then yeah, I'm gonna change this to why m many parents and or grandparents rather than conservatives because. I want I want to commentate on uh, Mr. Dennis Prager, which I've I've list I used to listen to Dennis Prager, um, I used to listen to him back in the uh, mid to late twenty um tens, and I I like I tend to like him more than I do the people that he has on Prager U. Because I I think he's a far more interesting person to just would be just a fun person to have banter with, and so I mean there are probably hundreds of thousands of men and women who because of political and or religious differences maintain minimal or no contact with their parents. And even more cruelly, do not allow their parents to have any contact with their children. Their parents, grandchildren, probably an un unprecedented number of Americans with growth, grown children will be alone this Christmas because of their children will neither visit them nor invite them for the holiday dinner. In some rare instances um, of uh, horrific parental behavior, this may be um, excusable, but when the reasons, reason is politics and or religion, it is a inexcusable, it is inexcusable. See, it's, and one, and it also goes the other way around where parents cut ties with the children because of their political views, political and or religious views. And we see that not so much on the Christian side of things, but we see that more so on the side of Jehovah's Witness and, and the side of, um, of the Mormons as well. I know... I know of this firsthand, Den Prager. I think is it Prager who wrote this? No, yeah, Prager's column. Parent after parent calls my radio show, often close to tears sometimes, actually sobbing, pouring their um, heart out to me about being alone on um on holidays, having children and grandchildren, children. In virtually every case, the parent is a conservative or, and or a Christian, and the child is, 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 is a liberal, left, or, or, um, or an atheist. I assume there are cases of grown conservative children who won't allow a liberal left or atheist parent to see his or her grandchildren but I have never heard of a single of, of a single such case 
it is almost impossible to imagine a conservative Christian or um or um conservative Christian or Christian conservative or Christian adult depriving his or her parents of access to their children because the parents voted for President Joe Biden. Moreover, or, or they held this or that belief. Moreover, if, if there were such a person, every conservative or Christian I know would, would vociferously condemn this individual. Why, why is this happening? Well, I'm going to give you a reason why it probably is happening. It's because of people like this. It's because of people like this who, 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 force, who force fear and control on people. And one of the things that I've oftentimes found among some religious people... I don't know about all of them. I actually would say probably most of them hopefully don't push their their views on on children on children and 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 or grandchildren. But but I thought we'd take a look at this one as well on dead state and I would talk about um this uh, demonic um, looking woman is an example of of a reason because I feel like um, I feel like she um, would be the kind of person this uh, what this would be the reason why one of the reasons why I wouldn't wouldn't want to wouldn't want to have my children or grandchildren around such a woman that looks like this. I mean, that's a telling sign. And you look at her eyes, and that tells you a lot about the kind of person this is. Well, luckily, luckily I haven't had to deal with many people like this in my life. So, let's talk, talk about this. During an appearance on the Lions and, and Generals show... This Monday, Michelle Bachman talked about how she spent Christmas warning her children, her grandchildren, that if they don't follow the teachings of Christ, they will most certainly burn in hell. I was with two of my grand grandchildren this uh, weekend, a two-year-old and a six-year-old, and I was just compelled to talk to them about when we die. It's judgment, Bachman said. Bachman said that she um, told the children that at the moment of death, a decision is made. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. We talked about what, he what heaven is, and we talked about what hell is, she said. That hell is just a, as real as heaven. And in hell... There's eternal fires and damnation. And it's a real place. We do not want to go there. That's where the wicked go will go. And then I explain how they don't go. That they uh, receive Christ and confess their sins. Jesus cleanses them. And then because of his righteousness, they go to heaven. Unsurprisingly, her fear tactics worked. And so my little granddaughter immediately started saying, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven, I said. Bella, can I pray with you? Let's pray. Do you want to pray? And I think, and I think, why miss an opportunity? You know, yeah. And so I've got like a video clip of atheist Christopher Hitchens and I thought we would 
I thought I would would give a diff another view to counter her view, and just to sh just to show what would Hitchens think of such a person. And so we've got Christopher Hitchens. If you want to watch the entire video, um, the entire debate, Hitchens. If you want to watch the entire video, I'm sure it's on here. But I'll play the clip here. Some people I know who are atheists will say they wish they could believe it. Some people I know who are former believers say they wish they could have their old faith back. They miss it. I don't understand this at all. I think it's, a, it's, it's an excellent thing that there's no reason to believe in the absurd propositions I just uh, admittedly rather briefly rehearsed to you. Um, the main reason for this, I think, is that it is a totalitarian belief. It is the wish to be a slave. It is the desire that there be an unalterable, unchallengeable, tyrannical authority who can convict you of thought crime while you are asleep, who can, can, who can subject you, who must indeed subject you, to a total surveillance around the clock every waking and sleeping minute of your life, I say of your life, before you're born, and even worse, and where the real fun begins, after you're dead. <laughs> A celestial North Korea. <laughs> Who wants this to be true? Who but a slave desires such a ghastly fate? I've been to North Korea. It has a dead man as its president. Kim Jong-il is only head of the party and head of the army. He's not head of the government of the state. That office belongs to his deceased father, Kim Il-sung. It's a necrocracy, <laughs> a thanatocracy. It's one short of a trinity, I might add. The son is the reincarnation of the father. It is the most revolting and utter and absolute and heartless tyranny the human species has ever evolved, but at least you can f die and leave North Korea. <laughs> does the Quran, does the Quran or the Bible offer you that liberty? No. No. The tyranny, the misery, the utter ownership of your entire personality, the smashing of your individuality only begins at the point of death. This is evil. This is a wicked preachman. So, that's the first thing. <laughs> and so I've got something else that I'm going to bring up in regard to this, to what he, with regard to what he has said. For every story, for every story, there, there, is, there are two sides to every story, and two sides to, there's two sides to one of those sides of, of the story. So, <clears throat> so what would I teach my, um, what would I teach my grandchildren don't believe in anything simply because you have heard it do not believe do not do not hang hang your body i e have faith and much less believe in anything simply because you have heard it do not hang your body much less believe in traditions simply because they have been handed down for many generations. Do not hang your body on, much less believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. But when, after observation and analysis, you find anything that agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and all, then accept it and live up to it. Question with boldness. Even the existence of a God. Question with boldness. 
even the existence of a god. Because if there be one, he must more approve the homage of reason than that of blindfolded fear. What is what is cooler? What is cooler? Uh, what is cooler and wiser? Teaching your grandchildren uh, to use facts, logic, wisdom, ration, rationalism, and reason, or teaching your uh, children, to, your grandchildren. To use blindfolded fear. To have blindfolded fear. Yeah, I just can't think of anyone, anything more, more on base and cringe than, uh, than, than making your, um, your, um, your, 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 your kids and your grand, and especially your grandkids, feel like garbage. Like, like seriously that's that's not cool and wise and it's also just funny hearing these uh, so-called freedom loving Christians talk about how oh the other group how oh they're they're, they're grooming our children when they're basically doing the same bloody thing. It's like, come on, man. Look at yourself. You're the very thing you preach against. Seriously. Look at yourself. Yeah, back with, um, back to, um, uh, to uh, Dennis Prager. No, number one, no accountability. This is a, uh, why is this happening? No accountability, number one. The further left you go, the less likely you, you are to believe that you are accountable to an absolute moral code. Let alone to a, a giver of an absolute moral code. On the other hand, conservatives, certainly religious conservatives, who are people who believe in a, a, uh, who hang their body on much less believe in a given, God-given Ten Commandments, believe that, hang their body on much less believe that they are obligated to honor their parents irrespective of such things as political difference and religious differences and you you want to know know what 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 um religious people should be doing with their children and everything do to others as you would have them do to you for this is the law and the prophet See, if your children don't want you bringing up certain viewpoints, much much like you wouldn't want um uh, uh, you don't if your children don't want you bringing up viewpoints and in opinions, much like you wouldn't want that, it's probably best to to keep the political discussions and the religious discussions at least to for the at least to the minimum if not if not like just not have them at all if neither of you can handle such discussions and so while on rare occasions it may be morally necessary there are a few actions meaner than ending all contact with one's parents and d depriving them of access to their grandchildren. But on the left, this is not co uncommon and, imme and immeasurably 
more common than the right. Well, I actually would argue that it's more common on the right than it is. It, it, if if not if not almost as common on the right as it is on the left, like you know, if you if people wouldn't bring their their religious and or political viewpoints up, um, when people don't want to hear them, then this wouldn't be a problem. It's all about respecting your children. It's all about respecting your children's boundaries. And and unfortunately, some people may not agree with that. The fact that leftism and rightism, might I add, often produces mean people, there are decent and indecent liberals and conservatives, might I add. And decent and indecent conservatives. Yeah, as I said. As I said. As I thought he didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't go there. Actually, he went there. That's good. But many liberals are indecent. And leftism makes them so. Well, does it? I've also seen, I've seen conservatism do the same thing. Or rather, republicanism. I, I wouldn't so much call it, call, so call it conservatism as I would call it republicanism. You know, so where am I? Leftism makes it so, whereas neither liberal... But many leftists are indecent. And leftism makes them so, whereas neither liberalism nor conservatism makes people indecent. Leftism breeds um, in, ingratitude, victimhood, moral arrogance. I mean, so, so, can, so, can, so can rightism do that too. And therefore cruel, cruelty. The Democrats threaten threaten treatment of um, of then Judge Brett Kavanaugh was one of uh, immunable examples. The um, the ex the scream sh screening screening screaming shutdowns of conservative speakers on campuses is another. And I can see that happening. But if but if you you were to have like some some conservatives in power, they'd probably do the same thing. The cruel treatment of parents is a, is yet another. Yet again, I'm going to add something that he doesn't add, that parents, on the right also do this, and that is something that, really. I think people need need to acknowledge. Yeah, and cruelty and cruel treatment of parents isn't yet another. Number two, the inadequacy of the conscience. The left proves the utter inadequacy of the conscience. To cite the present example, the adult children who deprive their conservative parents of contact with the parents' um, grandchildren have a perfectly clear conscience. All those secular people, including secular conservatives, who argue that God is unnecessary because it is enough for people to answer to their conscience, are spe spectacularly naive. The conscience of most People who do evil are blissfully untroubled. Most religious people who have done or at least not res res resisted evil also have undisturbed consciences. But to return to our present example, religious people who, be who hang their body much less believe they have to answer to God for their behavior 
are likely to treat their parents better than those who do not hang their body, much less believe so. They believe that God commands them to honor their father and mother. And God also commands them to to do unto others what they would like done unto them. Because remember what I said before, also respect your children's boundaries as, they, as you would want them to respect yours. And so behavior are likely to treat evil undisturbed conscience but to return to the present and uh, they're likely to treat their parents better than those who do not believe hang their body much less believe so they believe that God commands them to honor their father and mother there is no such commandment on the left And, I mean, I would say, if you had to answer to yourself before, before the Grim Reaper himself, if you had to answer for yourself before the Grim Reaper, before death himself, and death is the arbiter of truth. Because for it is in death that we see our lives pass before us. We are given an account for the things that we have said and done and or done. And we have to call, we have to give an, a, an account. I mean, one, one would argue that this is, um, one would actually argue that you're, that you're before God. And that, that's one way of looking at, 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 at such a near-death experience. Would make you really think about the things you've said and done if you had one of those experiences. You know, some people like to boil those down to um, just just neuro, neurological stuff. But it doesn't really matter if it's neurological or not. You know, the fact that you're being shown your life before you really should make you think that maybe I should um, be a better person. So in a way, you're kind of being forced to give account to yourself the things that you should have did better and the things that you might have a chance of rectifying. So let's, let's continue with this. Number three. Millions of young Americans who graduate from college are, morally speaking, worse people than they were when they entered college. How many parents believe their ch child came, became a finer or even happier human being at college? How many parents believe their children... I mean, hang them... Yeah, how many... Parents hang their body, much less believe their child came a finer or even happy, a happier adult human being at college. How many parents hang their body, much less believe their child became a worse and less happy person? You almost have to be a college graduate to shun your parents and deprive them of their uh, grandchildren because, because of um, political and or religious differences. If you had, a, had and asked most of the, these college graduates before they enrolled in college who, because of political and or religious differences, won't see their uh, parents for Christmas, if they could imagine never talking to their parents because of political and or religious differences, most of them would probably have deemed the question absurd. After four years of college indoctrination education, essentially consisting of hatred of, of, 
of non-leftists, the question is no longer absurd. On the left, it is a great grave sin to abuse, abuse the earth, not one's parents. I don't know how how tr how true that is, how true this is in every case, but I'm sure I'm sure there are there are cases where that is kind of true because. You do hear about about weird stuff. Uh, I've I've heard over the years stuff about U.S. colleges and whatnot. It's one of those things that I'm not a huge uh, fan of, or the is the college system because it's also yeah. You know, although you may learn the 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 tool set, it. It also is, doesn't really isn't really that conducive to free um, the freedom of thought. It's kind of like the school system. They a lot of these things tend to tend to um, shun much like like religion tend, tends to shun like original thinking. Um, these these um, institutions like your like the public school system. And the college system even tend to shun um, things like um, for the for 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 the sum of the part tend to shun uh, critical thinking and um, and 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 just um, having an original original thought. And I, I hope you enjoyed um, my commentary on uh, what on on the subject of why do you, uh, children not want to be around their parents and my, my thoughts on what Dennis Prager had to say. Until next time, peace out.